I'm gonna finish this and then we're gonna make a tea bag carrier because I'm sick. I am sick and I am drinking tea like no one's business. And then I thought this is a great gift to give people, especially when someone's sick. And my pattern that we are gonna put together together is gonna to include a place for honey sticks. Because if you're like me, you like a little honey in your tea. Before I film what I wanted to film, I have to fix this. Otherwise, it's gonna remain unfinished and just stare at me every single time I look at it. So to start off, you're going to need two pieces of exterior fabric measured at six inches by eight inches. You're gonna want SF 101 fabric in interface, the same size, and some fusible fleece. And I'd recommend grabbing some tea bags so you can measure correctly. Now for one of the pockets, I'm just doing half of it in um, interfacing because I didn't want it to be too thick. So this is me pressing the interfacing. That's my exterior, which was already interfaced. And then here, we are going to just make sure that it's all set. What I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna make sure I iron the fold on my pockets. My um, tea bag pockets is going to have two, or basically be two separate pieces of fabric. We're gonna have the green, and then we're going to have the uh, bees. Now I was holding my phone, I didn't have it on the mount, so here's where you see me pressing with one hand. And this is so that I get that nice crisp edge. Wanna make sure that I have that all set. The next I'm going to take my already interfaced bee fabric. Oh, and that's gonna be my lining. <laughs> I forgot I'm gonna show you. Um, and so, yeah, so I'm gonna put that pocket there. That's my first pocket. And then this is gonna be the second pocket. So this way you can uh, basically pack, you know, at, at least four tea bags. And this also is gonna have a space in the middle for cough drops and those honey sticks. When we get to the very end, you're gonna be able to see everything that I put in this beautiful little case. There we go, nice and lined up. You can see how they're about an inch apart. So from here, just gonna make sure that they look good, they're nice and spaced. Then I'm gonna take it to the machine and I'm gonna top stitch along the folded edge at about an eighth of an inch with about a three millimeter stitch length. This is gonna give it that nice clean edge. And once again, as always, I'm using my favorite sewing machine, the Juki TL18 QVP. I hope you guys make this. I, I know I sound more nasal <laughs> Excuse me, than my normal videos. This um, cold that I have has just been so awful. And as I'm drinking tea, I would just have all these tea bags in my bedroom. And I thought, I need to make this. There we go. And now I'm just gonna be attaching it to the sides. Now my back pocket, I'm gonna make sure that I stitch a line up from the bottom about an inch. So if you remember, they're about an inch apart in size or in height. So I'm gonna stitch along that line so it has a stopping point. Now, when you do this, you're gonna see me adjust this later, but I would basically only sew in about three inches and make sure you backstitch from basically the sides to the middle, leaving that middle open. Because what ended up happening is when I went to put my honey stick in, it was about an inch off. So um, just that. And then yeah, we're just gonna base that about a quarter of an inch, the other little pocket. And here I'm just gonna do a test, gonna make sure that my tea bags are nice and stacked. It's looking good, looking good. And here I'm measuring in about that three inches. Now I would actually adjust this just a little bit to maybe three and a quarter to three and a half inches depending on the size of your tea bag. And then right here, I'm gonna draw that stitch line where I'm basically gonna make that pocket. And I'm gonna do the exact same on the other side. And that stitch is basically gonna go up from the bottom up to the top of that pocket, making sure that I back stitch on both sides. Some other thing that you could do here is you could sew a line in the middle to make a smaller pocket for your honey stick. I noticed when I finished this that the honey stick um, started to, it, it slips out very easily because it's not that tight of a pocket. So I might go in here again and then make another stitch up the middle. And there we go, I backstitch at both the tops just to secure those pockets if they get tugged on. And there we go. And so here you're gonna see where I made the error with the honey stick. I'm like, wait a minute, what just happened? <laughs> 
Oh no, yeah, so now I went in, I did some magic, and I just start to seam rip. <laughs> I, I was gonna reinforce and I just, uh, ugh. Accidents happen, guys. Now it goes in much better. The next step, we're gonna grab our um, exterior fabric. You're gonna fold it in half and in half again so we can find the center point. Because what we're going to do next is we're gonna take some grow grain ribbon and we are gonna stitch just the middle part to the middle of that. My length for this is going to be the length times two and then add about two, um, I'm sorry, add about one inch to each side. This is gonna help us finish off the edges. Here I'm trimming it off, and then the next thing I do is I'm folding it over like an eighth of an inch and then over like a quarter of an inch. So this way I have a nice finished edge on the end of this ribbon. I'm gonna finish doing that, and I'm going to sew just one reinforced stitch, just back stitching on one, on basically that flap. Repeat on the other side. I'd also make sure that when you do this, you are folding in towards the same direction on each side. Okay, so now we're going to take, again, we're gonna press that center. We're going to take the center of the ribbon and sew it to the mid center of the exterior fabric. I'd also make sure that my stitch edges are facing down. Um, so that the right side, technically, of the ribbon is facing up. And right here, you're gonna see me put three uh, reinforced stitches across, trim those loose threads. And now I'm basically gonna uh, put them right sides together, so I'm gonna tie a bow in the back so it doesn't get caught in my stitching. And here I am starting to pin it together. And then you're gonna be able to see that I um, made an error on my cutting. So this correct size needs to be eight inches wide and six inches tall and I made mine about six and a half inches tall and so I in hindsight I should have trimmed off a quarter inch from each side but you know me I'm always working fast so I just sewed it to the top and then I folded it and sewed it to the bottom Okay, so here I'm just gonna make sure that it's evenly pressed on each side, which turned out to be about a quarter inch. If I was gonna do this again, again, in hindsight, what I would do would be to put the most amount of the fold on the top, because I found when I did my top stitching at the very end, the corners were extremely bulky. And mind you, this is the first time I made this and I filmed it because we did this together. And this is fun. So I ended up birthing the whole thing and then I found out that I didn't um, stitch around with enough seam allowance. You should be stitching around at a quarter of an inch and there was a part of it I um, sewed around in about an eighth of an inch. And so I actually had to unbirth it, stitch it down correctly and then rebirth. So you're gonna see that coming up here. Um, I use an old chopstick that I actually got from my grandma's sewing material when she got it for me. And so here I'm pressing it, pressing it, pressing it, and I'm noticing that my stitches are there, and whoops, gotta fix that. Yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. Think, think, think. Seam ripper day. Then I was like, oh, should I do this? Should I do this? And I was like, you know what? No, we don't have to do this. Put it back through, restitch it. We're gonna be okay. What would you guys do in this situation? <laughs> uh, no one's gonna know. How would they know? They're not gonna know. How would they know? <laughs> there you go. Just make those. And then I cracked myself up because then I made the turning hole way too small. More seam ripper, more seam ripper. See, this is why sewing when you're sick is a lot more complicated than one would think. Your brain doesn't fully go the way it should. <laughs> there we go, I'm making my hole just a little bit bigger for turning. There we go. So now I'm just gonna rebirth it, gonna birth, 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 push, 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 poke out those corners again. I love using the chopstick because it's um, 
firm, it's strong. I noticed that that purple fang, it's not that strong, it bends a little easy. So here I am just sewing at a eighth of an inch, three millimeter stitch length. And here's where I have the difficulty in these bottom corners because you have two fold a piece of fabric and then you have your exterior and your lining. So here, push, 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 push. <laughs> and again, no one's gonna know. And then we are all done. So you're gonna put your tea bags in, put your honey sticks in, you're gonna be able to tie a bow and ta-da. Okay. I hope I was filming all that. <laughs> so it's finished. Um, I painstakingly went through this class because I didn't have to work with it. Basically, you have two slots for tea, and then I have a chill on the thing. Um, it's probably going to be a bigger, and I forgot to trim it down. It's supposed to be eight and a half inches, and my outer fabric was uh, nine inches, so that's why that happened. But it kind of looks nice with it wrapping around that side. But um, if you wanted to make this even taller, I would probably go higher, like another inch. But um, this just has a bunch of SF-101, and so probably what I would recommend, um, maybe next time I'll do it, I'm going to put some fusible fleece to make it just a little bit more thick. But, um, oh, for the ribbon, I did um, two and a half times the width, box a little bow, and then you saw me, um, I basically sewed off the ends because you don't want it to unravel. But there you go. Perfect little gift for anybody who's sick or throwing your purse when you're going someplace. Um, this was a good scrap buster. I had so much fun going through my scraps. I was also very stressed out going through my scraps. I'm like, I've got a lot of scraps. So, anyways, thanks so much.